Good morning. Welcome to Normandale Highlands United Methodist Church on this good and beautiful day. Among all the things that you have planned and all the surprises coming your way today and this week, you've come to worship, and I'm so thankful that you did. Everything that's on your mind now, every, every concern and every worry that you have, every hope that you have, go ahead and hold it before God in this time as we sing the hymns as we pray the prayers, let God in on all that's happening in your life. God knows and God cares. I'm so glad to worship with you. Welcome. nervous this is loud good morning <laughs> hey not bad all right good hey welcome to Rumdale Highland it's a beautiful day we're really glad you're here um, it's, if, it's your, if it's your first time here we hope you enjoy the service and don't judge us on the next five minutes all right uh, but we're glad you're here and we hope you have a lot of fun um, we have uh, ordered in the sunshine um, we've got a couple other things going right now um, I know my brother-in-law Derek is a huge golfer, so we've got all the golfers outside playing golf right now while you're in church, um, which Rody and I have talked about is kind of a test for Derek. So uh, we want to see how much he can pay attention while the service is going on. But hey, isn't it awesome that the sun is shining? It's just beautiful, and we're, oh, I'm so glad you're here. So a couple things I want you to look at in the bulletin really quick before we get going here. Um, April 26th, that's a Friday night. It's coming up here in a little over a week. It's parents' night out um, and kids' fun night. So that happens on that Friday where you can bring your kids here to church. Um, so if that's something you'd like to do, uh, that's coming up here pretty quick. Um, confirmation class will be going to Feed My Starving Children on Wednesday, May 1st to help pay for the meals they pack. The students will be offering baked goods for sale on Sunday, April 28th after the worship service and then on sunday april 28th it's bluegrass flavor all right so that'll be a bluegrass flavor service um i am not sure what that means 
you're probably not sure what that means. I'm, I think my mom is the only person that knows what that means. But you should be here because it's going to be awesome. All right. So we'll get rolling here with these. Uh, we've got some beautiful flowers up here uh, given by Eric and Tracy Dungan for our parents, Phil and Alice Bolton and Al and Hildred Dungan. So thank you so much for those flowers. Those are wonderful. Um, they're, the United Women in Faith are doing a flower sale. And so if you go out there, just behind the, the back pews, there is a table. Um, and if you would like to order gift certificates, you can do so. Um, it's very simple. There's a half sheet of paper. You put your name on there. Um, and uh, how many you want? I believe it's $5 increments. Is that correct, Paulette? $5. Um, and then if you could include the cash or the check with that, that'd be great. So the, we've got two more weeks for those. So again, Sunday, April 28th will be the day that we're done with that. So please, if you'd like to get one of those, those are back there as well. Okay, um, for the next announcement, we're going to bring up uh, some guest speakers, um, Lexi and Anna, and they are going to tell you about what is happening today after church and why we are doing this. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. So, as said, we are hosting a brunch after service today for the youth group for support on our way to camp. Um, people, well, kids and adults have been working very hard on this brunch and we hope you enjoy it. The food will be delicious and it will be served to you. So you don't need to go up and do anything. You'll just be nicely served there by our happy youth group. Yeah, so donations will be to support Northern Pines. Yeah, so please come. We hope to see you there. <laughs> All right, so that is today, right after the service. Remember, there's no Sunday school, so everybody can go do that. Uh, before we sing our first hymn, which is 327, um, we're going to do Passing the Peace. And just remember, you've got options here based on where you are currently at. Uh, you can go with the handshake. You can go with the fist bump. Uh, you can go with the old traditional head nod, right, if that's something you want to do. Um, I, I know Margo and I, we used to do the, uh, you know, the chest bump, you know, where we kind of run at each other and do that, but she's asked not to do that um, recently uh, with her back. So um, whatever you want to do, uh, but that's, we, we, if you want to pass the piece, that would be awesome, and then we're going to sing. So let's stand, pass the piece, and we'll sing.
please be seated. So the kids, you're welcome to come on up, and we're actually going to get a special seat to watch, so you can come sit up here or here if you want. And we've got something special for you, and you're going to see some things happen, and then if you like, you can go down in just a, a few minutes after this and talk about what happened with Kirsten downstairs. But there's room for everybody, yep.
I invite you, if there's anything hard in your heart now, anything that anyone's done against you, to, to let that go as much as you can, to let it go to God and, and let God help you. If there's anything you've done wrong, any sin, I invite you to give that to God now in this holy time. Let's pray together. Blessed God, you know clearly what weighs on us. You know the wrongs of our lives. Release us, dear God. Set us free through forgiveness. And where we hold so tightly the wrongs of others, help us to forgive. Hear us now as we pray in the quiet. Hear this good news. Christ Jesus died for us while we were still sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. So we come and continue in a time of prayer. I'll invite us all to prayer together, and I'll, I'll lift up some names, and then I'll also lift up some general prayers, but behind every general prayer is, is someone who actually acts, asked us to pray for them but would like like it to be in the quiet so let's pray gracious and wondrous God we thank you that you hear us whenever we pray hear us now send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds and move in us stir in us and hear us as we pray for for this beautiful world you did create and the places that are not of peace now we ask your peace beyond our plans, beyond our negotiations, and, and through our plans and, and through our negotiations. But dear God, bring your peace to Ukraine and Russia, throughout the whole Middle East, for North and South Korea, and all the places where anyone is in fear. Hear us as we pray for for Nan, for Phoebe Smith. Dear God, we pray for Alice Bolton, and Mavis Slace, and Steve, Cat Lewis's brother. We pray for Bev Hauser, and Linnell and Bob Cars. We pray for Judy Peer and Jim. We pray for Bev and John Kozer for Judy Clark and Marge Reed. Hear us as we pray for Tom Kirsten. And dear God, we pray for all who can be known as caregivers, all who have to stay up late, all who wake up early or through the night to give care, all who sort medications and set things up and, and hurt their backs and lifting and and do so much for others. Whether they're paid or relatives, we thank you for all caregivers and we ask your blessings. Hear us as we pray for little Lucy and for Luna Ray, for all kids who struggle for health. And dear God, for all who, who struggle for healing now, all who are in hospitals, dear God, Put out your healing hand. And dear God, for Jeff Bergquist, we ask for, for a good procedure and for healing for him and blessings for his family. Hear us as we pray for all who are recovering from surgeries. And dear God, for families who struggle with one another, for people who struggle with addictions, for all who struggle with mental health, we ask your blessings and your care. 
And hear us now, dear God, as we pray in these quiet moments. Wonderful God, we lift these prayers to you through our hope, your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue to worship God with God's tithes and our offerings.
Let's see. <laughs> Here's Nick. <laughs> Our gospel reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you stand as we sing?
Please be seated. Right now in our church family, in the congregation and beyond, we each, each of our homes, we have meals in different ways. Some in the living room, some at a counter, some at a table. There can be a, a family meal where everyone's around the table and it's quiet, but there is not peace. You may have had a meal like this where everyone around the table is quiet and, and some words come out like, pass the salt, please. I'll take some more potatoes, please. And those gritted teeth words are coming around, but, and it is quiet. But we know through our life experience that, that quiet and peace don't necessarily mean the same thing. You know, we have, we have neighbors from North and South Dakota, and if you're in North Dakota or in South Dakota, they pick on each other a little bit for fun, and they are two different states, well, for boundary reasons and things like that, but but you can move between. There's another place of north and south, Korea, where it's not friendly banter back and forth. And there's this, can you imagine a border that's a mile wide between north and south Korea? And that, that border is over 150 miles long. And it's it's not called a land of peace. And if you know anyone from Korea, or if you look in the news or pay attention, you know that is not a place of peace. It's a place of quiet, mostly. And as best as we can negotiate and as best as we can muster, we create a mile by a 150-mile place called the demilitarized zone. And in your life, in, in your heart, in your mind, is there any place that is a mile wide and 150 miles long, and it is the demilitarized zone? I mean, that's a lot of syllables. And that's a hard way to live, with people marshaled on the border looking at each other with suspicion. And there's quiet. You'll notice in the sanctuary that we are decorated for Easter. You see the, the, the swoops, the swags, and the swags over here, and the, and the flowers, and, and it might occur to you that Easter Sunday was... I don't know, how long ago? Maybe 52 or 3 weeks ago? Way back. And the way we live our lives now, we build up to Christmas. We build up to Thanksgiving. And then we have the day, and then, you know, it gets to be time to pack it up and put it away. But in reality, we're not being lazy and just leaving the old decorations up. We're in the Easter season now. In the life of the church, we are in the Easter season. So the decorations, I remember years ago, uh, I think nine, when I was coming to visit the church, there's this thing in the United Methodist Church where, where the bishop and the cabinet, they pray over who will go to a church and then they send that person to the church to meet a committee. And the night I was going to meet a committee, I came in to hear because the committee was doing all their conversation ahead of time. And I came in here and saw these. And it just looked like a place of a party. And doesn't that look like a party? It's just, it's decorated, it's ready. We're in the Easter season now. 
and throughout all humankind and all human history were in the Easter season. Now, in, in particular, in the, the annual life of the church, Easter season continues until Pentecost, and that's the day of, of red things and a day of, of other stories. But in reality, Christ is risen, and, and Christ Jesus lives and reigns. And if you remember back in, in the days of, of Lent, just before Jesus went on the cross, just before he was arrested, he had this special meal, the, the Passover meal with the apostles, with the disciples, with the, the friends of Jesus. And in that meal, he said the important things. And one of the important things he said was, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Now, they didn't know that night that this is one of the last things Jesus would say before he went to the cross. They didn't know that he would go to the cross. But as Jesus saw the cross ahead of him, as he turned his face, some say like a flint stone, to the cross, to Jerusalem, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. There's a Hebrew word, shalom, which means peace. And sometimes when we go back to the, when we go back to the original, original languages, we see more of a fullness of the words that we use and more of the fullness of, of peace, shalom, doesn't mean just quiet. It means health. And it, and it has to do with the, the spiritual nature of, of the person you're meeting. When you wish shalom to somebody, you are wishing for their soul to be filled with joy and grace. We learn, and sometimes we pray through music, and, and one of the beautiful songs of the Old Testament, the psalmist wrote a song, the 85th Psalm, and in that song, if you imagine that the, the songwriters give us images, and the songwriter said righteousness and peace kiss each other. You imagine, and then, and then not only will righteousness and peace kiss each other, but faithfulness will spring up. Can you imagine the, the relationship of peace and righteousness, and when you wish someone shalom, when you wish peace upon someone, you're not asked, asking for quiet, but you're asking for a healthy life. So not only did Jesus wish peace on the disciples before he went to the cross, but our passage today was after Jesus was arrested. Was arrested in a, I don't know what to call it other than a sham. And after he went to a trial, and I don't know what to call it other than a sham, before he was arrested, before he was tried, before he was punished for things he never did, before Jesus went to the cross, he bestowed peace. And then he died. And we know that he rose again, and when he rose again and saw his friends, when he saw his disciples, he said, peace. And he said that with the wounds still in his arms, his hands. He still said that with the wounds still in his side. When we get wounded, 
One thing we hope for is for God's amazing power, the way he created our bodies to heal, is that they will scar up. And then if you ever have a scar on your hand or your arm, it's a tough area. It's been made toughened up. It will feel less than the rest. Jesus' wounds, when he called out peace, were still open. Jesus' wounds, as he calls out peace now, are still open. It's God's love that was maligned and arrested and killed is still raw and still passionate in love for you. And so this one wishes you peace. And when we pass the peace of Christ, this is the peace that we pass. And thankfully and wonderfully and amazingly, God, through God's holy word, tells us to be at peace as much as you can with everyone else. So you are not responsible for the person you're fighting with. You are not responsible for how they treat you and how they react. You are responsible for you. And as much as it's up to you, be at peace. You can't, and it breaks your heart, and it breaks God's heart, that God cannot make the other one come around. But God will nudge, and you can pray, and you can ask. So how is it with your heart now? And when I ask, how is it with your heart now, does anyone in your life come to your mind? And are you at peace as much as it's up to you? Or is the best you can do right now is to have a mile deep and a 150 mile long border? And are you very, very careful every time you meet? Maybe, maybe that's the best you can do now. And so you pray about it. And you ask God, and you ask God's help. Or maybe, maybe you have inroads. But as much as it's up to you, be at peace. Pray for peace. Ask for grace. And may the peace of God rule in your heart, and in your mind, and in your actions. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as we go, as you go, I do invite you to come and read your placemat. The kids, youth have worked interestingly and hard on the placemats, and some of them will be so meaningful, and some of you will make you chuckle. So go ahead and go out and read and go ahead and be fed and be treated. And you know this, this money will pay to take kids up to camp and if we raise enough, we'll have enough money to bring them back again. <laughs> but may you be blessed. With the grace of Jesus Christ, may you be blessed with the peace of God in your heart. And may you be blessed with the joy of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.